In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the process of transcription, the first stage in protein synthesis. In our last video, we introduced protein synthesis. And if you haven't watched that video, uh, click on the link right over here and watch that video prior to watching this one. We know that DNA codes for the production of proteins and that DNA is in the nucleus, but that proteins are made out of the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. So first we need to get a copy of the code from the nucleus and then use that to build the protein. And that's the job of transcription. We can kind of think about it like this. If DNA is the instruction manuals for a cell factory and they're housed in the central office of the cell, you can think of it like a bunch of filing cabinets of information. These instructions that we're going to use, we could go to this filing cabinet and take out the instructions for to make a certain protein. But we can't take that copy of the instructions out to the ribosomes to put the protein together. So we need to make a copy, or in this case a complementary strand, of messenger RNA that can leave the nucleus and travel to the ribosomes to be constructed or to be used to construct a protein. The process of making this messenger RNA strand is called transcription. In step one of transcription, enzymes are going to open up a section of DNA, a gene, that codes for the production of a protein. And only one side of the DNA ladder is going to be copied. We call that the sense side. Now for the purposes of what we're doing, I'll always label the sense side for you, or sometimes I'll label the other side the anti-sense side, and therefore this would be the sense side. So in this exercise we're going to do this side on the right, and it just arbitrarily on the right, will be our sense side. And now that we've exposed these nucleotides, or this, this section of DNA, we're going to start to build our complementary messenger RNA strand. The enzyme that's responsible for this construction is called RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase polymerizes RNA strands. It brings in complementary RNA bases, A's opposite T's, U's or uracils opposite adenines, guanines opposite cytosines, and cytosines opposite guanines. So what we're building here is our single strand of messenger RNA. And this construction is occurring in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, from the phosphate end of the nucleotide strand to the sugar end. And the polymerase will continue building down, uh, and I'll go ahead and just finish this off and finish building our messenger RNA strand. However, once we build this strand, it's not really ready to go out to the cytoplasm yet. We have another very important step. So we'll move our messenger RNA over here, seal our DNA strand back up. This messenger RNA strand at this point is called pre-mRNA, or the primary transcript sometimes. What's left to be done is it must be edited. This original DNA code has lots of extraneous information in it. It's kind of like extra information. Um, and so that extra information gets transcribed uh, or complemented in this messenger RNA strand. So when we look at it like this, here's our messenger RNA strand. And what we have are sections of important coding material called exons with these intervening unimportant sections that we call introns. Now this is a little bit tricky because the introns are going to be cut out and the exons are going to be spliced together. Now if I were in charge of biology I would have done that completely the other way. I would have left introns in and let exons exit but I'm not in charge so we have to go with what we're given. Introns are cut out and exons are spliced together. So let's watch. Enzymes come in, cut out our introns. These enzymes are actually a complex of enzymes called spliceosomes. They cut out the introns and then pull the exon pieces together. And so we've shortened our code and gotten rid of all that extra information. We will watch that again. Here come the enzymes, cutting out the introns and splicing together the exons. Now the 5' prime end of our messenger RNA strand is capped with the nucleotide, a special nucleotide with the methyl group and a phosphate group. Now I wasn't sure how to draw that, so I just draw a ball cap. Um, and so that represents our methyl phosphate cap on the 5' prime end. And this allows the messenger RNA to exit the nucleus via a nuclear pore. You can think of it kind of like a hall pass. It's a permission slip to get out of class, or in this case, to get out of the nucleus. Without that cap, this messenger RNA strand has a difficult time exiting the nucleus. And on the 3' prime end, 
we're going to slap on a long tail of adenines, 1 to 200 adenines. These extra adenines aren't coding for anything particular, and I didn't draw 100 of them, but a poly A tail, many adenines. And this is actually very important to the lifespan of this transcript. When this messenger RNA strand does leave the nucleus and head into the cytoplasm, there are enzymes that start breaking this message down. But those enzymes can only work from the 3' prime end. So if you can imagine uh, an enzyme coming and kind of eating this uh, strand from this end, one nucleotide at a time, it's got to start and make its way through 100 to 200 of these adenines before it gets up to the important part of the code. In the meantime, we could have translated these exons, this gene sequence, or this messenger RNA sequence, I should say, uh, many times to produce copies of the protein that it codes for. But eventually, those enzymes will get to this important part. So the length of the lifespan of any transcript really depends on the length of the poly A tail. The longer the poly A tail, the longer the lifespan of that transcript, and the shorter the poly A tail, the shorter the lifespan, and thus less proteins being made, because less time for translation. So now our mature transcript is ready to leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore and go to the ribosome for translation. Come back for the next video, we'll go through the details of translation and its steps, initiation, elongation, and termination.